my name is Tommy Taylor and I'm the creative partner at Alphabetical. I'm Bob Young and I'm also a creative partner at Alphabetical. Um, and we set up just over five years ago. In 2010, both myself and Tommy had worked in other larger uh, design agencies in London. And then we both felt time through different circumstances that it was uh, the right opportunity for us to set up something ourselves because we both had ambitions to create something from the ground up and have our own studio. So we decided to start working on a few projects together and just kind of blossom from there, really. It's quite broad at the moment. I would say if there was a sway, it would be towards the arts. Yeah. I don't know how that's come around. It's, it just yeah. seems to have. Um, so a lot of the projects, you know, whether it's you know, through Design Museum or um, some of the other smaller creative startups that we worked with, or universities like University Arts London or Goldsmiths, I don't know, there just seems to be um, you know, a sway towards the arts. We, we feel exceptionally lucky that we've, we have worked with uh, such a wide range of clients. I think even saying the arts and charities is still um, only uh, kind of, that's probably a small cluster in amongst the large range of clients that we have, and even the amount of varied projects we have as well. We so far have avoided being kind of pigeonholed into print or digital or exhibitions or wayfinding, yeah. which I know can happen at a very early stage of the studios. Um, a lot of our work, or our early work, um, stemming from, um, from a project we did called The Link, has been to a younger audience, and I think that's naturally um, opened doors for us, for other people um, with a project, whether that's an identity or um, you know, a programme or a website or whatever it might be. Um, if their audience is young people, then they can connect with some of the work we've done before. So it's not necessarily um, the sector or type of work, it's, it's, it, there's a common factor of who the audience is. I think, yeah, the majority of the time, I would say that it's, you know, we have a very paralleled um, you know, vision for whatever the project is. Um, you know, spookily so, actually, because, mm. you know, considering that actually Bob and I have never worked together before, um, you know, we've been friends, you know, since we both arrived in London as, as, as junior creatives, but, um, you know, we just, you know, we knew that, you know, there was enough of a bond there that we would, you know, had the same sort of ideas about things. I think that's actually something that we get told as a benefit because there's just two of us running the studio or founding the studio. Often we do have to come to resolution if there is something that we see slightly differently, which, as Tommy said, isn't uh, surprisingly isn't that often. But if there is something you kind of see going different ways, we do talk it through, rationalise it. Again, it's coming back to making sure the idea is appropriate. I mean, it's not really a, ever a situation where one of us is just designing it uh, or leading it and then dealing with the client. You know, we're, we're kind of both involved with the process, you know, whoever's looking after the project. Yeah, everyone's always aware, it's the benefit of being in a small studio that you're uh, totally aware of everything that's going on all the time. There's no one hiding in a corner, designing something you don't know what it is. So it's, um, it's you know, fully plugged into what's going on, even if you're not leading the project and aware of it. And then more recently, you know, behind you, we've got the wall that we, you know, regularly just pin stuff up. So some days you'll, if you came in yesterday, you know, you, there wouldn't have been a spare space on that wall. It's just lots of things go on it. And that allows each one of us, or either us to just keep checking on what's going on or just, you know, just soaking it up, even if you're not actually working on it. So it's quite nice that we're able to do that. I think you know we do we do do quite a few pitches, yeah. and it's a, it's a strange one for us because we would have been involved with working on pitches before. But when it's when it's your baby and you're responsible for um, the money that you're and the time that you're spending on it, um, you, you do have to you do have to be quite focused on how much time you're allow, you're going to allow yourself to work on it and and what resources you're going to put to it. But invariably, you know we want to we don't want to work on something unless we think we can give it our, our all. Um, and so in, if that includes pictures, then that's often the way it goes and we'll dedicate a week to it, or, or, you know, which is, we know is much longer possibly than a lot of people would do, but if it's worth doing, then it's worth doing properly. Yeah, I think we assess it project by project. As Tommy said, we're quite lucky that probably nine times out of ten, a lot of our new business comes from current clients or recommendations from current clients which is a really good way to do it because there's already that level of trust that we were talking about a minute ago. Um, if it comes from someone you already know or it's a recommendation, then it can be bestowed with trust from that point forward, which uh, has been a really lucky way to do it. So often a lot of the pitches we'll do is for current clients, so don't really have that massive feeling of kind of nothing underneath you because 
will maybe be pitching with other agencies on the roster or something else to then get something. And if that doesn't proceed or it's maybe not the right execution, then there'll always be a next time. So I think we're quite lucky that maybe uh, it's only one in four pitches would be completely for a new client, completely out of the blue, and something where if we didn't get it right, then it would proceed somewhere else because we're, we're lucky to have good ties with the current clients that we have. I think it's knowing the ones to say no to straight away. Um, it's not something that you, know, you start out by knowing, and we are certainly in the process of learning because we get far too excited about things straight away, and that can, all, all, can cloud your judgment on whether you should do something. Um, but I think now we have a lot of discussions about it, and you know we talk about it as a whole group, in fact, um, and share our thoughts on it, and you know what what the possible pitfalls of a, a project could be. And sometimes you're wrong, and, and it, it, it should have been one you said no to. But more often than not, you know we're pleased that we said yes. Every project's the same. Actually, we approach it in exactly the same way that we talk about it a lot, um, and then we. We spend time to digest that us independently, um, and then we arrange to meet in, let's say, a couple of days' time or, or whenever we think it's going to be a suitable point for us all to to chat about it. And then we just really sort of lay all our thoughts out, and then it's often a question of just talking through each one. And then very quickly, I think there's always a consensus towards uh, certain ideas. And it, I'd like to think it wasn't it wasn't just Bob and I that just said these are the three that we're doing, and everyone. Um, yeah, it's just it's interesting actually how when you talk about something as a group, you all levitate towards certain creative avenues, and it happens every time. Yeah, I think there's a difference with it being a really small studio and the fact that um, myself and Tommy are still designing creative directors, and we still get involved in projects, especially at the initial stages. It's a really exciting time. That, you know, we're already filling our heads with ideas by the time we've read the brief or walked out of the meeting with the client. So we kind of really want to get in there, make sure that we are involved in every stage, but initially the, the kind of concept stage is the most exciting time, and that's probably the one we'll be the most hands-on with, so it's not a case of me and Tommy sweeping in for an hour and kind of going yes, no, yes, no, and then going out to another meeting again, because we're here, we're in the studio, we're designing, we're putting up ideas on the wall as well, that everybody gets to input and then everybody gets to critique our work as well.